Hi, Richard Knutson here again, and welcome back to the Dynamic CRM Trick Bag. Now, in this edition, I'm going to talk about another one of my favorite new features in the area of entity relationships in Dynamic CRM 4.0. This time, on the ability to add new custom relationships between system entities. But first, a little background. My company, IMG, we're based in Chicago, and we specialize in consulting and learning solutions for SharePoint and Dynamic CRM. I personally specialize in CRM. I've got a master certification in Dynamic CRM for having passed all three of the certification exams for the current product version. So now on to today's topic. Well, there are a lot of improvements in Dynamic CRM 4 compared to the previous version. And from the standpoint of a person who needs to customize CRM, the area of entity relationships is one of the biggest improvements in the product. Well, in CRM 3, you could create relationships between custom entities and between built-in or system entities and custom entities. But here are the most important new entity relationship features in CRM 4. In other video tutorials, I discuss the self-referential and many-to-many, uh, -many, the native many-to-many -many relationships that we can now create between uh, entities in CRM. But here, what I want to focus on is the ability to create a new relationship between two system entities, which you'll also sometimes see referred to as uh, customizable entities. So we'll talk about the third of these here. So when it comes to these so-called system-to-system -system relationships, to paraphrase Joe Walsh, so what? You know, why does this matter? Well. One of the things people like best about Dynamic CRM is how customizable it is. In fact, you can really think of it as a platform for developing custom database applications. But one of the limitations of CRM 3 was that you could not create new relationships between the built-in or system entities, such as account, contact, opportunity, case, or any others. You couldn't create relationships between those entities and uh, any other built-in entities. What I'll show you here is an example of how useful it is now that we can do this and I'll use the user and contact entities to illustrate. You might be familiar with the concept of ownership in CRM. Many organizations will use the owner of a customer record such as contact as a proxy for a sales rep or account manager. This will work fine but what if you have multiple points of contact for a customer say an account team sales model now this was difficult to do cleanly in CRM 3, but in CRM 4, because of this new feature, it's simple. Now I'll show you that next. Now, as I've done in some of my other demos, I'll uh, utilize CRM Online, the hosted edition of uh, Dynamic CRM, to illustrate this, but I'm going to start by going to my on-premise and showing you a relatively uncustomized view of the contact form. So if I just pop open a contact form and I look at the general tab, you'll notice that I've got the owner, the traditional represent presentation of the owner field, which if you've worked with CRM a little bit, you'll probably remember that the owner field selects from CRM users. And this is a so-called user-owned entity. One of those users will be assigned as the owner of this account. And if that was all you had to work with, that would be the CRM3 scenario. But now, I'm going to use our slightly customized version of our, notice the, uh, the CRM online, so crm.dynamics.com, this is the hosted version. And I'm going to look at a slightly customized version of the contact form here. Pop this open. And you don't see the owner look up field on the general tab, but if I navigate to this account team tab, I see a couple of interesting things. I see two fields that are both lookup fields, one called account manager and one referred to as technical account manager. If I pop open account manager, you'll see I get this lookup against the user entity, and if I pop open technical account manager, you'll see I also have a lookup against the user entity. So if you're a customizer or a database person, you probably think to yourself, hmm, two one-to-many relationships from user to contact. And this is what's new in CRM 4, this ability to create this second, third, and fourth, if you want to 
do that, relationship between two separate system entities. I'm going to close out of here now and I'm going to make another customization to this, extend that a little bit, and then we'll go back and look at the customized contact form when we're done. So I'm going to Settings, Customize Entities, and I'm going to create one more custom relationship between the user and the contact entity just to show you how you actually do this. So I'll open up the contact entity, and what I want to do is I want to create a one-to-many relationship here from user to contact, which wouldn't have been possible in CRM3. Well, if I'm in the contact entity, what I can do is create a many-to-one relationship from contact to user. In CRM, these are symmetrical, so I can create a one-to-many relationship from either the primary or the related entity. I'll just do it here from contact, because it's a little easier. I can save myself a step. Go into contact, create new many-to-one relationship, and here's the relationship dialog that I use when I'm creating relationships between entities in CRM. And notice the related entity, if I just press U and advance through the various uh, different entities that start with you, you see I get this user entity. User is obviously a system entity, so here I'm creating a new relationship between a one-to-many from contact to user, and I'll call this, I'm going to give it a slightly better name, I'll call this executive contact, and uh, tell you about that choice of names in a minute. Go down to the relationship attribute, and it asks me for the display name. Now, this is referring to the lookup on the form that's on the many side of this one-to-many relationship. So this, since this is a lookup, this is going to be the in-context name, how I'll refer to the user entity. And what I want to do here is call this executive sponsor. And it'll fill in automatically executive sponsor ID for me. And I'm going to use this option here, the display option for the primary entity. And I'm going to select do not display. In a minute, I'll tell you why I made that choice. So let's save and close out of there. And one more thing I need to do before I leave the contact entity is to pop open the account team tab here on the form. And I do need to add that field to the form. I can create the relationship, but until I actually add the field to the form, nobody would be able to see it or do much with it anyway. So I have to go down here and look for my new field that I added. There's the executive sponsor lookup field type that the uh, relationship added to the as an attribute to the, to the uh, contact entity. And now I see that I've got now my new executive sponsor here. And just to show you one more thing, if I pop open the account manager form, notice that even though the label, that is the display, is account manager, notice that the, the actual name is owner ID. So this actually, in fact, is the owner field. I can't change that. I can't take the owner field out of the uh, out of the, the contact entity or off the contact form. That's a required field by the system and always will be required. But I can change its display name. So that's kind of a standard um, customization that you can make on these forms. You want to extend the, um, the analysis like that. So now let's go ahead and close out of there. Let's publish these changes. And now as soon as I publish those changes, I'll be able to navigate back to sales, open up a contact form, and see the results of what we've done. So now I'll pop open Dave Ross's record, navigate to the account team tab, and I can here identify Jeff Sparks as the technical account manager, and Melissa Terrell as the executive sponsor. And now I've got a nicely well-defined account team that really, from a technical standpoint, just consists of three one-to-many relationships from the user to the contact entity. So, I hope you found that helpful, or at least interesting. And if you have any questions about that, or any of the other services we offer, I encourage you to shoot me an email at richardk at imginc.com, or go ahead and visit our website at www.imginc.com. Thanks for watching.